but you know a style is is what you're known for and i think so many artists struggle with this concept of like i want people to see the piece and know it's me and, and yes don't we all want that but i think where people get caught up is i have to paint either the same thing over and over again the same color over and over again the same subject like i need to be so specific that people you know 100 percent of the time know it's me but i think what i would say is think about the artist who no matter what they do you know it's them i mean let's talk about there's teal duncan there's ashley longshore there's i mean monet it's not that they're painting the exact same thing over and over and over again it might be the the voice or the tone of their work like an ashley longshore is very loud and kind of in your face and bright colors but she's painting everything under the sun but then you know or is it the way you hold the brush the texture you use the materials the you know it needs to be more than just the materials but you know what i'm saying like the the overall kind of vibe that you're giving off with your work or is it the you know the color palette and, and it's really muted and it's something that you always really stick with like i think there's going to be similarities because visually we are drawn to certain things. So you're going to find that you are not painting the same. You don't have to paint the same thing over and over again. You're going to start see some, seeing some similarities and some through lines through all your work. But that takes time. It takes exploration. It takes taking classes or courses or just getting in the studio. And so what I would recommend is don't constrain it. I think so many artists start off with, I want to find what my style is, therefore I can only do one thing. And if you do that, that will 100% stifle your creativity. It's the opposite of what you want to do. So I'm going to talk to kind of what some of those mistakes are. But before I do that, I want to talk about what is a brand. And I think this is related because obviously branding is very much related to your style. So when I think of a brand, I think about, and sometimes I think it's helpful to think about a company versus an artist, because if you think about an artist, you're gonna think about their work. But if you think about a brand, like let's say anthropology, like they have a very different feel than J. Crew. And so it's kind of like, okay, you know, maybe someone might shop at both, but if I'm shopping at both, I'm shopping at them for different reasons. And it's because they're both might have a white t-shirt but the person that buys a white t-shirt from J. Crew might look different than the person who buys a white t-shirt from Anthropology. So you have to think about that. And so yes, you know, you might attract people that aren't exactly your ideal customer and in your brand, but you want to build a brand that speaks so clearly to one person and tells so exactly who you are that people really resonate with it. And that's how you kind of develop a style as well, because if you have a very clear brand, and your work fits into that brand, you're also developing a style. It all works together. So when it comes to developing your brand, I like to think of three things. You want to think about yourself because you want to be authentically yourself. You don't want to be, you know, trying to be someone that you're not. And so I want, I want you to think about who you are and you can amplify certain parts of yourself. You don't have to be authentically yourself. That doesn't mean sharing every nitty gritty detail about who you are. I mean, there, I'm sure there's plenty of things that you don't know about me. I mean, I think, I feel like a lot of people, I'll coach them and they'll say, I feel like I know you from the podcast or from, you know, the membership or from whatever it is, but you know, there, it's not like, you know, the whole me. And so it's thinking about what persona do you want to put forward? And obviously like as a coach, I want to put forward that I'm intelligent about the things I'm talking about, that I care about the arts, that I'm personable and someone you're going to want to work with frequently if I'm you know coming at you from a coaching perspective or someone you're going to want to listen to every week if I'm coming at you from a podcasting perspective but for you as an artist it's you know who are you and what parts of yourself do you want to amplify you want to think about your work and so when you're thinking about your artwork just think about even if you don't have a style yet are there common threads you know are you using certain colors are you using certain palettes like that's going to influence your brand if you are a loud boisterous ashley longshore type artist you don't need to have like a light blue and like pastel brand like you probably want something that's a little loud and in your face and you probably want your tone to be a little loud and in your face so thinking through first you know who you are authentically what the work is and then the third of uh, the third piece is who is your ideal customer and the reason this is so important is because you need to know what who they are so that you better know how to speak to them so when it comes to you know being your authentic self like for me i know for the most part 
the types of people I'm trying to reach, the types of people I'm trying to coach, the types of people I'm trying to speak to through this podcast. I'm not trying to reach everyone. I'm not even trying to reach every artist. You know, I'm trying to reach artists with specific struggles that resonate with certain things that I feel like fit my brand and, and relate to me. But through understanding who my ideal customer is, I can project certain parts of myself that are going to relate to them, both through my branding and through, you know, who I am. And so for you, it's when you're thinking about, you know, doing an Instagram post, for example, you want your post to visually go with, you know, the story you're telling, who you are, what your audience wants to see. You want your tone to speak to the audience, to answer their needs, to answer questions before they ask, but also be in a voice that sounds like you, but also is fitting this brand image and also sounds like the kind of voice that's going to be coming from your artwork. You know, you want to really make sure everything takes those three pieces into account. So just to summarize, you know, you want to think about yourself, your artwork, and your ideal customer. And that's what a brand is. So to develop that, what I like to say is it's going to come with time. You're going to want to really study your work. You're going to really, really want to think about yourself. And you're going to want to really think about your customer. And so that's something I work on with a lot of clients. You know, we really dive deep into your ideal customer. I have that worksheet as a, it's a pop-up on my website. So highly recommend taking that and like it's not you're gonna sit down and do in 10 minutes it's like you might work on it for five minutes walk away come back to it it's gonna be changing forever but like you're gonna get a clearer and clearer idea of who this customer is it's not like any of this is set in stone so you want to think about that you want to think about you know who you are write down five words that describe you you know write down you know all these different things that that are who you are and then I want you to write down a list of words that describe your artwork And, you know, don't say it's blue, like get a little bit deeper than that. You know, is it playful? Is it quiet? Is it loud? You know, words like that. So those two, and then write down the words that describe your customer and then what is in the middle. And I want you to narrow it down to three words. And those three words should indicate every piece of content you put out, the way you speak, the way things visually look, all of that. And then that needs to be reflected everywhere. And also know you're not trapped. I think that's the biggest mistake and the biggest fear I see an artist is they're like, well, if I commit, you know, to, to this, I can't ever change it. And it's like, you can, I, I don't know if, how many of you remember, but before the scouted studio, the website was called straight to art and had a different name, had a completely different visuals. At that time, I think I was only working with Charleston artists. It, it was just totally different. And I rebranded and I don't think people, it didn't do anything but benefit. So know that you're also not trapped, but you obviously want to put, you know, time into doing it right the first time.